So let's talk about the future of libertarianism because Grover Norquist over at OZY.com, a site I've never heard of before, says uh, smarter, fresher, different is their tagline. Anyway, beyond Rand Paul, the libertarians are coming. And by the way, Rand Paul is not a libertarian, nor does he claim to be a libertarian. So just put him aside. Norquist says they're no longer on the fringes. The libertarians are now officially mainstream. Proof? The New York Times Magazine cites the popularity of Republican Senator Rand Paul and opposition to American boots on the ground in Syria and Iraq. But it's much more than a moment. It's the culmination of a powerful narrative building over the past 30 years in American politics. This is a movement, and it doesn't live or die on the shoulders of one policy or one individual. So forget moment. Think trend. And consider the once impossible political shifts that have taken place over the last 30 years. The relevant dividing line is not right versus left or Republican versus Democrat, but the expansion of individual liberty versus whatever and whosoever stands in the way. The introduction of liberty as the commanding heights in American policy debates is recent, as in the last few decades, but also unique. In the past, ideas ignored or denied by the two major parties might die off or, if strong enough, spawn a successful third party. The libertarian trend has not led to a viable libertarian party, perhaps both because uh, the right and the left have grabbed onto the emerging vote, moving issues that might have built a third party. What's notable is that regardless of whether an issue originates from the right or the left, and even though it threatens a powerful constituency in the Republican or Democratic Party structures, the side able to grab the mantle of liberty has advanced against all odds. Here are four disparate examples of radical change all headed in the same direction. 30 years ago, homeschooling was illegal in all 50 states. Parents were, and occasionally still are, actually hauled off to jail for violating compulsory attendance laws. Today, homeschooling is legal and lightly regulated in all 50 states. Two million students are being homeschooled, and 10 million Americans have been homeschooled for some part of their K-12 education. This movement had to grow powerful while still outside the law, be competent enough to defeat the teachers' unions in each state, and deliver the goods in improving education. Several steep hurdles. Now that homeschooling is legal, homeschooled students seem to be winning all the spelling bees. <laughs> school choice, allowing parents to choose which school they wanted for their children, public, private, or parochial, was considered beyond the pale in 1980. Now 2.6 million students have government scholarships or vouchers available to pay for their choice of education. 380,000 in Louisiana, 25,000 in Wisconsin. He goes on and lists some more states. And I think it's important, um, he's listing off freedoms that we've developed in the last few decades. And I think that's really important to look at is, is mm -hmm. that, um, uh, you know, there's a narrative out there that uh, that the freedoms are diminishing in the United States. And I think it depends th on where you look. Well, yeah, I think it depends on where you look. But I'm mostly I think if you look at the airport, that's mm -hmm. the biggest problem. Would you agree? Can, can you think of other freedoms that are diminishing besides the airport? Because the airport sucks. Well, the militarization of the police overall has diminished freedoms just on the streets of America. Look at Boston after the Boston bombing that happened last year. Yep, I'll give you that. And you'll see house-to-house -house armed searches by camo-wearing police pointing guns and rifles and things like that at people while driving bearcats. And that's a pretty scary sight that you certainly didn't see 30 years ago. So there's that. Uh, Derek J, any uh, any no, obvious? I'm, I'm trying to think of some, but I I feel like I'm I have no history to draw on. Well, you know, like I don't really know what it was like before. Like I was shocked to hear that homeschooling wasn't around 30 years ago. I thought that's always been the case. The debt doesn't really affect the American Americans on a day to day basis, but it has grown tremendously over the past two presidents, um, and that's. I, you know, what that does is that worries me about the future for future Americans. It certainly makes life harder to go about living because the cost of living will go up as a result of the government's monetary policy. Or they'll just like continue that. to stack debt upon debt. So 40 states have a total of 6,640 charter schools. And in New Orleans, 90% of students attend charter schools. 30 years ago, there were actually laws criminalizing gays. Gay Americans often lived in fear of legal and social opprobrium. The closet was real because it was safer. State by state, city by city, blue laws were repealed or struck down by courts. The culture and our laws opened up. Once unthinkable, now gay marriage appears inevitable. Attitudes toward gay Americans have shifted dramatically. Yes, the courts drove some of these changes, but public opinion has also shifted dramatically over the decades. 
The drive for gay rights has moved quickly. And yet, when some politicians have demanded that gay rights means a Christian florist or minister has to participate in a gay wedding against his religious beliefs, the pendulum appears to stop and may swing back. Why? Because freedom of religion then trumps, you do what I want. The team that frames its side as defending and expanding liberty will win. Yeah, and I'll tell you that um, that whole forcing people to do what's against their religion because gay marriage is now legal thing really it really makes me regret the support that i have given to gay marriage is is that you know look see see what happens when we give uh, you know we give people rights under the law uh, this is why no, that, that shouldn't make you uh, regret supporting gay marriage that just should should make you oppose the idea of forcing somebody uh, forcing someone against their will to do business with someone they don't want to do business with it has well, nothing to do with gay marriage. But, it, it, but uh, supporting it under the, under the color of law gives it a whole new set of. If sort I of, don't want to sell anything to anyone who's married, I should not have to. Agreed, one hundred percent. We'll come back with more here in moments. Hour number three is on the way, and we'll get our comments from our token gay guy in the studio here tonight. It's Free Talk Live. Uh, so we were just commenting on this Grover Norquist piece where he's identifying a few different things where freedom has progressed because it's easy for us to look at the negatives around us. It's easy to see the police state, uh, to see the military tanks, the crazy incarceration rates. I mean, the United States, of course, is one of the worst places, if not the worst place in the developed world uh, to live as far as, you know, you're very likely here compared to other places to get arrested for something, some nonsense victimless crime. The jails and prisons are loaded up with, uh, with innocent, peaceful people who've never harmed anybody. And uh, there's a significant amount of that going on here, and it's gotten worse over time. The war on drugs, of course, prohibition, you know, the alcohol prohibition went away, but it was replaced with drug prohibition, which has not gotten better. Uh, there's not what, more freedom uh, in that realm. So it's easy to point out all the negatives, the, the bombings going on around the world, etc. But Norquist is pointing out a few of the positives here and how it is that the advocates for freedom in some areas have have won the day and he gives homeschooling as an example uh, apparently that, i didn't know this i didn't know homeschooling was illegal uh 50 years ago or in the 19 i think it was the 1950s yeah no 30 years ago he says homeschooling was illegal in all 50 states which is was a shocker uh to me which means that parents were homeschooling their kids because the because homeschooling didn't just become a thing because the government said okay yeah okay it means that they were doing brave it. Yeah. People said, I refuse to send my kids to school. I want to educate them myself, um, likely in many cases religious people. But I just I, 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 I'm always amused by the law and order crowd who tends to be sort of religious and usually the mainstream, you know, sort of uh, religions that uh, people are familiar with because, you know, that's the kind of people they are. They're law and order folks. They're conservative. And, you know, it let's let's point out here. Many of these law and order folks be very pro homeschool, but it was civil disobedience that brought you homeschool. Yep, and mm. he also talks about uh, how gay marriage uh, is now much more acceptable, and just being gay publicly in general is uh, is much more acceptable. And and Derek J, you've been gay your whole life. How's that make you feel? <laughs> it's it's good. Although I've always felt very accepted. I know there are other parts of the country where. People aren't as accepting. It's certainly harder in certain parts. Maybe the the, uh, the Bible Belt, for instance, might be a little harder to be uh, an out gay, but it would have been a lot harder 30 years ago, right? Yeah. Wherever and, you lived. But I, I uh, attribute that victory to cultural wins and the bravery of individuals sharing their lives, their their personal lives, their loves uh, with their friends and family and neighbors, because it's the, it's those types of people who really change hearts and minds, not politicians who say, oh, okay, gay marriage is fine. Well, right, the politicians, they don't lead the parades, right? They run out in front of the parade to make it look <laughs> like they've been leading the parade the whole no, time. They've got their thumb to the wind, and yes. they're, they're listening to see, you know, what are the gay people thinking? What what are the uh, the average folks thinking about the gays? Is it okay now? And uh, they're we're society... a decade or two behind. They're at least two, if not three decades behind society, I would say. Yeah, so once society is, is cool with it, then the politicians are ready to jump on board and say, yay, rights for gays. <laughs> Meanwhile, we've, we've all been on that that same page for, for years. Yeah, and we're seeing the same thing with marijuana laws, too. Although the author of this article points out something troubling about uh, the gay rights issue, which is like right after we saw, you know, gays are having their day, mm -hmm. marriage everywhere, they're on TV, hooray, that's great. But then some 
people are taking advantage of this saying, well, now you have to make us cakes. <laughs> now you have to right. uh, do our wedding ceremony. We have to be allowed to have a wedding on your private property. And uh, that really upsets me because it seems like these people uh, have no, they don't have, they don't value private property. No, right. just because well, just because you're gay doesn't mean you value well, private property. Right? right, right, yeah. Or that you understand what liberty really means. You may, you may want liberty for yourself, but you may not understand how that really translates into you have to allow others to be free, which means you would have to allow well, the bigot to have his own business and make his bigoted cakes. And, and not this make comes one down for to you. forcing people into uh, you know a new paradigm. This is a you know creating a new world order, as it were, as opposed to increasing freedom. I want gay people to be able to contract with each other to live together if they if that's what they want to do i want them to be able, be able to do that however i don't think anybody should be forced to recognize it or do anything else like mm -hmm. my marriage should not compel you to do anything that's right it should my marriage should maybe if you run a hospital allow you uh, uh, you know allow my wife to come visit me um in you know ways that maybe other people shouldn't or something like that but that's really the end of it for me whereas other people will use it as a cudgel to mm. force things upon you yeah, that's the sort of what I'm talking about. Like, uh, I was disheartened to see, because I consider, like, my gay family, you know, everyone who's gay in some news story somewhere, I'm like, well, I've got something in common with them, and I can relate. So, But when I hear these stories of people saying, well, now you have to make us cakes, oh, man, it's so disheartening, because I'm well, like, yeah. come on, guys, uh, you just won a little bit of freedom. Is it really time to throw the authoritarian hammer around? Well, the fact is, just because someone's gay doesn't mean they're not an authoritarian, right? I mean, just like, there's all kinds of brilliant authoritarians out there, and they have come up with amazingly smart ways to control our lives, and so I wouldn't want uh, those people in my family, regardless yeah. of what their preferences. Yeah. So we continue here. Another a few points. He's got a couple other things on, you know, this is what has progressed over over time, over the last few decades, because freedom, he argues, wins over, over, over the years. 30 years ago, he says 80% of Americans supported stricter gun control laws. Certain guns were banned. Organizations formed and expected they would soon ban handguns in private hands. In 1987, Florida passed a shall-issue concealed carry law that required local government to give any honest and sane adult a permit to carry a gun concealed on his or her person or in a purse or car. I love how we uh, can stipulate that honest and sane adults can have guns. Well, who decides who's sane? Who decides who's honest? The government. Right. Well, it's <laughs> because, not perfect, that's for sure. That, no, I, I understand, but I just, it, it's it's always amuses me. At this point, the government seems to be, uh, th there's no other way to disarm the American populace, so they're just going to make everybody a felon. They don't let these things go easily. There's no doubt that the, this has been a slow, arduous process that obviously he's summing up in a paragraph or two decades of very tough work and and difficulty that has resulted in these social changes. I mean, it's it's a messy process. Like right now, Derek J., you have been denied your supposed right to carry a firearm in one of the what is ostensibly the most gun freedom oriented states in the union. Live free or die. They've told you no. And these, the, there's a, what they call a shall issue permit here in New Hampshire. And <laughs> now you're having to hire a multi-thousand dollar attorney just to take this denial to court to try to retain your rights. So it's, it's a messy process getting from here, which is more restrictions, to there, which is fewer restrictions. I'm shocked that the author is actually uh, making the claim that there's more gun freedom now than there was in the past. It's not like I was around in the past. No, to, that there's more gun freedom now than there was in the past. He certainly. says today, 40 states have enacted such laws. In 2007, there were 4.5 million such permits, and today there are more than 11.1 million permits. Arizona, Vermont, Wyoming, and Alaska don't even require permits to carry for their citizens, and 5% of the adult population has a concealed carry permit, one out of 20 people. This drive has been fueled and validated by the fact that violent crime falls faster in states with concealed carry laws and even faster as more citizens avail themselves of that new, he puts in quotes, right. Now, we know that's not a right, okay? that If it were a right to carry a firearm, as it should be, as the Constitution and, you know, the Second Amendment... You don't have to ask permission for a right. Exactly. So That's it. That's the end of the story. You know you have a right because you don't have to ask permission for it. You don't have to ask the government to bl to breathe or blink or do a variety of things, but, you know, your, your right to carry arms, that's attenuated right. 
Well, what's that mean? We tell you when you can do it, how yeah. you can do it, and if you can do it. It ain't true gun freedom yet in most places, but his argument is that it's moving slowly in that direction. The final point on Grover Norquist's list of things that he's observing is as being more free now than in the in our lifetimes, actually, is marijuana. 30 years ago, marijuana was illegal as medicine or even as a recreational uh, use drug in all 50 states. Today, 21 states allow the use of medical marijuana. And now, of course, Colorado and Washington state have legalized its sale for any purpose. Full state legalization will be on the ballot in Oregon and Alaska in 2014, and likely California, Arizona, and others in 2016. In Congress, the House of Representatives in 2010 voted to scale back its 100 to 1 ratio of punishment for crack cocaine versus white powder cocaine. This backing off of the widening anti-drug war of the 1980s was made possible by a unanimous vote in the House. I have to say, I didn't hear about that news. Yeah, what unanimous vote? A- apparently, a unanimous vote to uh, to remember, scale back the punishment for crack versus cocaine. I think I remember Rand Paul being behind this. Am I wrong? Is that are the years wrong on that? I don't have. Uh, it says they voted in 2010, <sighs> so it could have been. Could have been. Was he around there then? I, it would have been close. Check. Feel free to check that out and pull up more info about that vote. I'm fascinated that it was <laughs> uh, was unanimous. Anyway, he says one no vote could have killed the unanimous consent needed. Why would they have needed a unanimous consent for that? I'm confused. I need to know more about that. Anyway, he goes on to say, now three states are pushing policies called the right to try. These state laws in Colorado, Louisiana, and Missouri legalize new drugs now deemed safe by the Food and Drug Administration, but not yet deemed to be effective. Arizona may become the fourth state this fall. This deregulation speeds up the ability of sick Americans to get possible life-saving drugs years sooner. Was it the California Senate or the U.S. Senate? It says here the, it was Congress, the House of Representatives, okay. in 2010. Anyway, the deregulation speeds up the ability for sick Americans to get life-saving drugs sooner than the FDA allows. The stoners opened a door that may improve and perhaps save the lives of many ill Americans. Drugs, parents saying no to public schools, guns, gays. Could there be more controversial, he puts in quotes, public issues? And yet all moved in the same direction over 30 years of American politics from Reagan to Obama. These four radical, unthinkable expansions of individual liberty are not liberal or conservative, Republican or Democrat. All flow from the small L, libertarian, live and let live, leave us alone, laissez-faire attitude. Four movements calling for increased individual liberty while their opponents explained with hundreds if not thousands of years of tradition and history to back them up that society should have the power to control behavior for the public good. One can see other issues that follow this trend. Uber against the taxi regulators. Airbnb. Lyft. Bet and invest on the side of advance. He says bet and invest on the side of advancing liberty. A libertarian moment? No. A trend. A long-term trend with no obvious roadblock in sight. All right. Oh, it's I great. like the way he puts that. Yeah, it's great. It's a positive message, and I think that you take that you know, you take that news, you combine it with the Free State Project, mm-hmm. where we're actually getting real libertarian thinkers together and doers all in the same place. And think about what's going to happen here in New Hampshire in the next 10, 20, 30 years. I mean, that gets really exciting because what he's pointing out here is all of this liberty-oriented stuff has happened. It's taken decades but it's happened over time, and it's been brought about not by libertarians. These, you know, the people that have put forth these changes haven't been libertarians. They've just been responding to the market demand to some extent. That slow political change that takes forever to happen, that as we were talking about earlier, trails what society actually wants, but eventually kind of catches up when some of the older people die off. Uh, that's happening already without libertarians actually winning public office. So when libertarians start to get elected, will we see this accelerate? Will we see that happen here in New Hampshire? Will we see politics follow a little closer to society in New Hampshire than it does in the rest of the country? And what will that end up looking like? I'm excited to find out. Gosh, I hope so. I would like to see a situation where maybe the politicians are ahead of the people. where They've got too much. Uh, they allow too much freedom. That maybe Boy, that's people a, you're a dreamer. <laughs> 
Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> All right, fine. <laughs> but that's good. you got to dream big, right? Like, you know, even if we get halfway to that point, that would be pretty great. Yeah. And it would really put New Hampshire out above the pack. And, in fact, when, and, uh, when New Hampshire becomes more obviously free, it's already arguably the most free of all the 50 states, but when it becomes the clear right. most free state. I don't want it to be close. Yeah. I don't want it to be arguable. Right. So when it becomes the clear most free state, then we'll start to attract even more people to come here because not everybody wants to be on the, you know, they don't want to be on the cutting edge. They don't want to be the the pioneers like we are. We're the early movers for the Free State Project. You know, we, we moved before the Free State Project even completed its 20,000. We're still working towards the 20,000 people to sign up for the Free State Project, which you can do at freestateproject.org. But after the 20,000, you know, then there's going to be more people coming because this will become a more attractive, more free place to be. And that'll result in more wonderful developments that we can't even envision today. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. 